Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. So here I've given you a number line and what I want us to do is to write this in set builder notation as well as interval notation. So if you want, you can pause the video and see how it goes. It's always the best way is to try it yourself first and then see how I do it. So let's start with set builder notation. That's the long one, which has three different components. So we're gonna make our funny brackets. First part is just to say X. Then we're going to say that x must be any number bigger than 3 and smaller than and equal to 5. Smaller than and equal to because this 5 is included, but we're not including the 3. We then say that x is an element of real numbers. Next, we're going to do interval notation, where we always add xe in the front. We then do a round bracket and a square bracket. Square bracket means we're including the number. And we're going to go from 3 to 5. That's it. Let me just explain this part over here quickly. So we're saying that x is, let me just write this down. So look at this part. We're saying that x is bigger than 3. Remember, this is a crocodile mouth, and the crocodile is hungry, so it eats the bigger thing. So the bigger thing is x. So x is bigger than 3. Then if you look over here, the crocodile mouth is eating the 5. So it means that the x always start with x. x is smaller than 5. Now that makes sense. x is bigger than 3 but smaller than 5. So x can be any number bigger than 3 but smaller than 5. And it can also include 5 and that's why we've added that little line over there. Here's another one. So try this one but don't look at what you did in the previous exercise. Always try each question from as if it's a brand new question. So don't look at the previous ones. You always want to challenge yourself I promise you that is the fastest way that you will learn how to do this. So throw that other page away that you've got in front of you right now. Let's try this one from the beginning. So in set builder, we have the funny brackets. We've got that over there. Then we're going to say that x must be anything bigger than 2, but we can include the 2. And it must be smaller than 4, and we can include the 4. We then use a semicolon, and we say that x is an element of r. So we've got three parts. We've got this part we've got this part, and we've got that part over there. In interval notation, we say xe. We use square brackets for both because we can include the 2 as well as the 4, and that's it. Here's another one. So in set builder, that's the funny brackets. So we say x. We now, now tell me about this. this. These numbers here will be any number bigger than 3. So x, which is the number, must be bigger than or equal to 3. Of course, you can also do it the other way around. You can put the x there, as long as the crocodile is eating the x, because x is bigger than 3. Remember, x is all the numbers that are on your number line. So that would be things like 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and it keeps going on. So x must be anything that's bigger than or equal to 3. So we put that over here, x bigger than or equal to 3, and x is an element of r. In interval notation, xe, we then put a square bracket. Why? Because 3 is included. Now we don't have a number to the right, and so we use infinity, and infinity is always round. And if your infinity sometimes do something like that, no worries, no one's judging you. I've done that many times. So that's how you would do that one over there. Now in class, your teacher might have done one like this, where there are separate dots and there's no line connecting. What that's trying to tell you is that the number can be minus 2, it can be minus 1, it can be 0, and it can be 1. What it can't be is the stuff in between. That's why we don't put a line there. So we can't use that. When we have a line connecting them, now all of a sudden you can have numbers like minus 1, 4, 3, 2. But when there's no line in between, then it's only the dots that you can see. So what are these numbers called? Because these are now we're not going to say x is an element of real numbers, because real numbers includes everything. Numbers like this that can be negative and positive, but they don't have any decimals, they're only these bigger or these complete numbers, we call these the integers. And their symbol is a z. So, 
In set border notation, it will look like this. We have the funny brackets. We're still working with x. x is going to go from minus 2 up to 1. So x must be bigger than minus 2, smaller than 1. That doesn't change. It's this part here where we say x is an element. We're not going to use r. We're going to use z. So we're saying, sorry, I did my z like that. There we go. So z means integers. In interval notation, there is nothing that we need to do. Interval notation only works with real numbers. So that's nice. Less work for us to do. So please remember that. Interval notation only works when we are busy with real numbers. So you would see that your teacher probably just put a line through when they were doing it in class. So if you were given this in class, notice that there's no line connecting them. What that means is that we're not allowed to include the stuff in between. We only want to include the integers. Now, of course, we can include the integers that are in between, such as 0, 1. That's okay. You just don't want to include all the weird decimal numbers in between those. So in set builder notation, we're working with x. x goes all the way from minus 1, and we can include minus 1, because I've colored that circle in, up to and including the number 2. Then we are busy working with integers. So remember, on a number line, when you have minus 1 here and 2 over here, there is the number 0 and 1 automatically included. We're not skipping them out. And so, and then remember, for interval notation, there isn't one. Okay, so for interval, we're going to say NA, not applicable. In, uh, interval only works with real numbers. That's the end of this lesson. Thank you very much for watching.